In this video, I want to provide an introduction to the denominator of Bayes' rule. So Bayes' rule is just written P of theta given data x is equal to the inverse of that, the likelihood P of x given theta times P of theta, the prior divided through by a term which I just call the denominator, which is just p of x. And I should have mentioned that the left-hand side here is the posterior distribution, the thing that we want to obtain. How do we actually calculate the denominator? Well, the idea is that we can actually rewrite the numerator as the joint distribution of p of x and theta, and the denominator just staying the same. And to obtain this numerator here, we just use the conditional rule of probability. And then essentially we just rearrange it to obtain the joint probability. And it's important to note that this numerator here is actually a valid 2D probability distribution. The reason that it's typically not a valid distribution when it appears in Bayes' rule, however, is because the data x is fixed and we vary the parameter. And when we hold one of these things constant and we vary the other one, then it turns out that this isn't a valid probability distribution. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss both the discrete and continuous parameter versions of the denominator and explicitly how we obtain the denominator in each of those two cases. In both cases, however, the denominator is a marginal probability. It's marginal because essentially we have removed all dependence on theta from the joint distribution. And hence the way in which we obtain that marginal distribution is we marginalize out the parameter theta. So in the discrete case, we just have P of X is equal to the sum over all possible values of theta, so from theta equals some value theta one to theta p, say, of p of x and theta. Similarly, in the continuous case, we do the continuous version of marginalizing, which is an integral. It's the continuous analog of a sum. And so we integrate across the entire range of our parameter. I've just said here from minus infinity to infinity, but in practice, that will be whatever bounds your parameter has of the joint distribution, the numerator of Bayes' rule, p of x and theta with respect to theta. So I'm integrating with respect to the parameter. So it's important to note that in both of these cases, the parameter is one dimensional. In other words, there's just one parameter. And that means that in practice, both of these calculations can actually be undertaken. The sum is fairly simple to do, so long as there aren't too many values of theta, and the continuous integral or one-dimensional integral can generally be done either approximately or analytically. Let's now consider the two-dimensional case. Now our joint distribution has two parameters in it, which means that essentially we need to do, for the discrete case, two sums. So we do the sum from, say, phi equals phi1, to phi q and theta equals theta one to theta p of p of x theta and phi. So now phi is another parameter that I've added in to our joint distribution. How do we work out the denominator for the continuous case? Well, essentially we just do the continuous analog of two summations, which is two integrals. So again, we're integrating across the possible range of our parameters and now we're integrating the joint density, which is a function of these two parameters. And we're integrating now with respect to phi and theta. So can we undertake both of these two calculations? Well, typically we can. The left-hand side, the discrete case, we can, so long as the parameters theta and phi don't have too many elements. And the continuous 2D integral is typically okay to do using either analytic or approximate deterministic methods. However, it should be said that the two-dimensional integral is much, much more complicated than doing the one-dimensional integral. And you may notice if you try and apply deterministic methods to working out this two-dimensional integral, say using a computer program, 
it actually takes the computer some noticeable amount of time to work out that calculation. So now let's consider the n-dimensional case. So now we're imagining that we've got n parameters in our joint distribution. So how do we work out the discrete denominator? Well, essentially we have to do n summations. So I'm not gonna write the limits on these sums, but essentially we're doing n summations where these are nested and we have p of x, theta, phi, and let's say sort of going on up to the sort of nth term or the nth parameter, which is epsilon here. How do we do the continuous case? Well, essentially, unsurprisingly, what we have to do is we have to do n integrals. So now we do the sort of n dimensional integral. So we're just gonna have n integral signs here of the joint distribution p of x, theta, phi, etc., all the way up to epsilon. And we're integrating with respect to epsilon and then sort of all the other parameters and phi and finally theta. So can we actually do these calculations in order to work out the denominator, which as we see here is an integral part of Bayes' rule? Well, typically we can't. In the left-hand case, the discrete case, we may be able to work out all of the individual terms in our sum, so long as the dimensionality of the individual parameters, so by dimensionality here, I just mean the number of elements that each parameter has aren't too large, but you can imagine that if n is only modestly large, there still may be an intractable number of terms that we need to sum together. So this is likely impossible, Failing that, it's at least very difficult. And the n-dimensional integral case is without doubt impossible to do using approximate deterministic methods. So those are methods like Gaussian quadrature or something you learned at school perhaps, the trapezium rule. So long as n is greater than about sort of four, five, something like that, the integral is just impossible really to do using those sorts of methods, at least in a reasonable amount of time. So what do we learn from this? Well, we learn that if we have a problem of modest difficulty, by difficulty here I mean the number of parameters in our model, then it's going to be very, very difficult, likely impossible, to actually work out the denominator term. And this partly motivates why in Bayesian inference we choose to instead use sampling to sample from the posterior distribution rather than trying to exactly calculate it. But I'll discuss that in future videos.